What's up? It's your boy back at it again with another technical analysis in the series we like to call Underrated Throwers. So, today we have a very special one as well. I know I say that every time. This one's actually truly special because we got Wolfgang Schmidt. Now, a lot of younger people probably don't know who he is. And um, I think he's criminally underrated. Not particularly what he... I mean, he was... A 71 meter throw or 70 71 meter thrower a silver medalist in the olympics i think a world champ i'll put all his uh his personal best um his um uh height and weight and his accomplishment uh notable accomplishments in the video description but one thing that's very special about him is he's a very special athlete um he was like a 70 plus meter discus thrower at at one time a former world uh, a world record holder he broke mac wilkins world record like a couple weeks or so after mac wilkins broke it and the dragon shot came through like four meters further so whatever um but wolfgang Schultz was a former world record holder but he was also like a 19 20 meter shot putter a really good high jumper. I don't know the height, but um, and was also like a long jump. Like he was like there's videos of him on YouTube like doing high jump and all this other crazy stuff. Like he was just a supreme athlete. Um, he's from Germany, and actually it's really sad because in the prime of his career he um he was imprisoned. Uh, I think by East Germany because he wanted to defect. I forget the reason. I think he spoke out against um, East Germany and stuff. So, but don't don't uh, don't you can fact check me on that. I just know he got imprisoned in his prime. I forget what for. You know, but he was him and Mac Wilkins basically um, define like basically have the the are the inspiration basically for the modern day discus technique and i think wolfgang schmidt in particular is a really good example of what a finish should look like in disc he does some stuff i i personally don't agree on there's a lot of he's a lot of people have been very critical of how he comes out the back in his middle um me personally I, i'll be a little critical of it as well i'm not gonna lie but really all I care about showing you guys is the finish. But we'll go over his entire throw. But um, he inspired so many others. Vestina Steisen, um, uh, Gerd Cantors, and Daniel Stahl's coach. Um, well, I guess Daniel Stahl's former coach. And Simone Peterson and coach names Mac Wilkins and Wolfgang Schmidt as inspirations for his technical coaching style. So already that's already good enough for me. And you can see a lot of similarities in Gerd Cantor's finish to, um, and, uh, um, and Wolfgang Schmidt's finish. And really, he's a, he, he's inspired, a, like, you'll see when we get to the finish, you'll see how modern this looks. For, um, a throw, this was in 88, when he was already a little old. I think, well, no, he was in his prime. I guess entering his prime a little. No, actually, he's older here. He had a pretty long career. Um, he competed, I think, into the mid-90s. Yeah. So, yeah, but let's watch this in some full speed. So you can see very quick. Very quick. Stays grounded through the finish, at least. You'll notice how he kind of hops up. Um, and as kind of... He doesn't... Um, I don't like how he accelerates, because he really... I guess he kind of does. A little. He's a little too controlled for my liking. Out the back and in the... Out the back, at least. But that's just me. But let's get into it. So, he winds... 
here, I would like him to have a little longer left arm, so his uh, so his armpit is over his knee instead of that. But that's fine because his left arm is over. Well, his left armpit is over his left heel, so oh well. Um, he kind of picks up his right foot out the back a little too soon. Um, and I personally don't like that. I think that's something that Gerd Cantor does a lot differently than him. And it's one of the reasons I think he threw further. Because, uh, he doesn't really get, like, a good, like, stretch reflex. Like, if he just held out a little bit longer, his, his groin... His groin would have a bigger stretch, which um, would in turn just make him pick up. Would just make him. Oh, whoa! Would make him pick up his right foot instead of him having to like really like force and like really like use his muscles, I should say, and actively do it. Um, and actively sweep, I should say. So he gets here. It's not bad by any means. I mean, obviously he's a seventy plus meter disc thrower. So I mean, how bad can his technique be? <laughs> um, but you hear really wide. But this is a a big problem I've always had with him is um how like tense his sweep leg is. You know, I would like that just a little more loose, a little more, like, yeah, a little loose, and I, and a little more, like, elastic, and for my, for my personal coaching style, um, but this obviously works for him, and so he gets here, Is a little tilty. Now this is where a lot of people are critical of him. Is he extends and kind of jumps. And like he's really high. And I think that's one of the biggest differences between him and Mac Wilkins. Mac Wilkins was a lot lower to the ground and got a little more across. Uh, Wolfgang Schmidt really liked to... Um, kind of hop which i personally don't get how he does that and throws that far but i must it's because of his finish i should say i do know um and because i mean he's just a freaking animal i mean he's just a beast so and when you're that much of a beast and that much of an athlete you can get away with stuff like this so you know but his I don't, you, so out the back, you should never, re, you don't really extend this left knee fully because you hop and he doesn't really extend it, but like he extends it and then re-bends it. So he really hops in there and like, he's like really high above the air, like way higher. So from here, he's not doing anything. Like, what What normally would happen is that he would have a little white... Uh, he'd, his knee would drop. See, Mac Olgan's co uh, coined the term a 9 o'clock drop, which means that you're, if this is a clock face, the ring, your left knee would drop at 9 and just drop towards the ground. And what that does is it forces you to go forward and to get off it as quickly as possible. And that's a sprint. Well, and you do that also while pushing, pushing forward like you're coming out of blocks and sprints. But he does the opposite of that and goes up. And he does that so he gets a really nice hip, uh, hip uh, curl in the middle. So I'm really tired. <laughs> Um, if I'm pausing a lot, sorry about that, but, um, 
Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So he does a uh, hip curl. But I feel like this is kind of cheating with the hip curl because the whole point of the hip curl is to build even greater torque and stretch reflux, but he has no tension here, really. Like, he, well, obviously he has tension, but not that much. Um, because he floated in the air. So, like, when his... Like, he doesn't have that much direction forward. He's basically just spinning in the air, kind of. Not, like, as much. He's, he's He is going forward, just not super aggressively because he can't because he just hopped up in the air so if i had one major critique i would say i would like his whole left side to be a little more over his left and to just sprint straight and not have a super high knee i would like his sweep leg to be straighter and go around and down okay so but that's basically it and because he hopped he kind of tilts a little down here instead of keeping stacked and being a little more straight but this is where he really shines and this is really what i wanted to get into is his finish now his finish is the foundation of so many greats you know he's basically the pioneer of the non-reverse reverse aka you know how you should reverse and let's see so now normally when you would hop and stuff like this, your right foot would have to stall to let everything catch up. But no, he turns, turns, turns. And he has a beautiful touchdown. So he's here. Textbook T a little open. I don't know how far this throw is, so I don't But um He normally lands a little more closed. Uh, ooh. <sighs> Stop doing that. Oh my god. There, okay, Jesus. Um, his left arm is kind of out here. Right arm super far back. And then... He really goes... Now watch his right knee. So it goes out. Out. And around. And he really stays grounded and just goes forward. Now, if anything, he's he kind of does a glide reverse. Whereas, he turns for a little bit and then really just pushes forward. Really just... He, has, he probably has some of the most out in discus out of anybody. He doesn't really get a lot of height. But he just out, out, out. Really gets a lot of outward energy. So, he gets here, and boom. And it, one of the other things he does so well is his block. His block is superb. See, he's just holding that. Everything's just perfectly square. The disc is out of his hand by now. And he just keeps following through. So, he un under-rotated a little because he... Normally, I would like to see... Um, the right knee a little more bent at this finish, and him still pushing into the ground. He's had he's had better throws than this, where he does do that. I just wanted to show videos somewhat of of um because people have done technical analysis, but I wanted to show a video of um someone of of a video of him that people haven't done a technical analysis video of. And I haven't seen one of this throw in particular. So, gets here. And he does not jump and everything is going forward. And he does he does his signature get back in the ring. I mean, you can just see how athletic he is. I mean, just look at that. That's more than like my, my freaking vertical. <laughs> um... <laughs>
So he gets here, boom, and the other thing he does really well. Oh, would you stop doing that? Stop. There we go. <laughs> the other thing he does really well is stays super long. And the reason why he stays super long is because he goes out and around with that right knee. Out and around, so he stays long. If he was to just turn his right knee and not without the out, his forces would go that way. And he would finish on this sector, and it would be super late, and he would lose power. But here he's super nice and square to the finish. Because he goes out and around, and boom. And that's his throw. So, once again, I think he's very underrated because I think, one, he accomplished a lot. Two, he um, he missed basically the prime years. So, he basically broke the world record and then, like, soon after that, he got in prison for multiple years. And then he had to move and then uh, he moved to the U.S. and became training partners with Mac Wilkins. So, he still... Tr um, Competed for Germany. Um, even though they did him dirty. But, um, yeah, so, and, you know, former world record holder. And the big reason why I think he's underrated is because he inspired so many people. Um, and is one of the, the godfathers of modern day technique. Him and Mac Wilkins for modern day discus technique. So, yeah. And another thing uh, I also want to mention, uh, he was a glider in shot put, which I think contributed to a lot in him having a really good block and why he reverses like this in discus, because it's basically a glide reverse, but in discus. So, yeah. All right. Uh, hope you guys learned something and see y'all later.